let's go ahead and show you what happens on a regular pass using the SAT system. I've loaded up the program here, which is the inner IP number of the unit itself. I'm just going to roll on this whole thing and then zoom in on each piece that we need to see as it happens. But up on the top left you can see the SAT unit itself and it's showing you the IP number. So you put that in your browser, comes up with a web page, and here's the standard layout. Uh, if I now get ready for a pass, I'm going to go, this is my logbook that it's showing right now. I go to the bottom and I go to the scheduler and I load up the satellites that I think I'm interested in. I can set those in here by uh, choosing the satellites and putting in my preferred list. Then I look at what's coming up. Oh, we have RS-44 here, 932. That's a couple of minutes away. And it has the max elevation of 54.37 degrees. That's a nice high elevation, so it comes up above the horizon. Some of them don't coming up, you know, come up above the horizon as well. I'm looking for the ones for me that are 15% or higher because I've got a lot of houses and foliage around me. I need them to get up over the horizon at least 15 degrees so I got a good shot at them. So several of these in this lineup today have that. But next one's going to be RS-44. I'm going to close this and I'm going to go uh, back up to the top here and turn my scheduler on. All right, it's already on. You click it, it goes off. Click it, it goes on. And I've got my radio on. In this case, the 9700. Any of the ICOM SAT type radios will work. And then we sit here and wait for the pass. And um, about a minute before the pass, and this is set upable, it will give you a alarm telling you that this pass is, is going to happen and it's getting ready for it. And it'll beep at you through the laptop itself or the unit or either or settable in the menu. So I have it just set up to beep me on the laptop when a set's coming in. And on the left here, we've got the map of the uh, world showing you the coverage of the satellite as it passes over. We'll see that coming up. Uh, over here we're going to see the exact elevation and azimuth of the satellite as it comes over. Our acquisition and loss of signal time, so we'll see how long it's going to be overhead and accessible for us. The local time, and I've got uh, also local... Oh, there we go. We've got wind speed on there as well, which you can have. All right, all of a sudden it's telling us that the satellite is coming. And um, Right here, we've got the ground view here. You can see it coming up and high over our heads. That's going to be interesting to watch. This is the polar view, just sort of a bird's eye view looking down from us in the center where it's going to pass us to the left here towards the west. Um, again, the information I told you about here. And here we go with the different um, modes of the signals coming out of the satellite. Right now, we're going to have the beacon uh, a couple of different beacons going on here, and then the center of the transponder range. So that's going to give us where we're going to need to uh, talk in and out. And we can click on any of these, and it automatically will change the radio to that frequency range or what, what you're listening to. There we go. It's beeping at us, telling us uh, getting the uh, rotator ready. Got the 5500 Yesu on this one. And sometimes the first thing you want to do is go ahead and listen to the... Um, beacon. So I'm going to click it over to there, crank our volume up a little bit. In fact, I'm going to turn off the uh, light so we can just see the screens that we're looking at over here. Are we looking, are we seeing everything well? Yeah, pretty well. I tilt it up a little bit. I'll zoom in as things get important to us. So right now we're seeing that the satellite is right at the horizon. We look down, we can see the elevation of the satellite's 2.2 degrees. My rotor's sitting at 2.3 degrees. You can set a lot of the parameters in, in here to tell your rotor, uh, I'd like you to you know, jump ahead of the track a little bit as it moves across the sky. I want you to every so often jump ahead and you can dictate exactly how tightly you want it to track. So you want to use that motor a little bit more, a little bit less. Because of the beam width of the antennas on typical satellite uh, antennas in use, say the Leo pack or whatever, those, those beam patterns, beam widths are quite wide. So the absolute accuracy of the pointing is not not as critical as one might imagine, but in general it is because you know by the time you're out at uh, 300 to 1500 miles away, that beam width covers a large part of the sky. So we'll slowly see the uh, satellite move up the arc here on the ground track, and see 15 degrees over here is my well sort of threshold for me in this neighborhood. Now a lot of people out there where you've got your antennas with a clear view of the horizon. Uh, you're going to be able to work these birds as soon as they get up over the horizon, you know, a few degrees or whatever. Uh, I've got to wait till it's about 15 degrees before I can hit it. 
and um, let's see here. Yeah, we're coming up now. We can. Sh it shows you the the rotor itself too, of positioning the antenna with the orange square, and the satellite itself moving with the white dot. And the green dot says that's your acquisition of signal. Absolute, you know, first time you could possibly see it. The uh, SAT unit itself also has a little LCD display on it that is showing us uh, the sort of basic information, you know, uh, acquisition of signal, loss of signal, elevation, such like that, and uh, what satellite it is. So that's uh, also displayed on there, say if you're out in the field or whatever. But all of these windows are pop-outable. You can hit the window button at the very bottom and make a separate window and size it however big you want of any one of these windows. So that's sort of cool. I usually pop out the map, make it a little bit bigger on my second monitor, um, and you could have your uh, satellite list. What this does also is, of course, search for all the next upcoming satellites for you so that you'll see the day's progression of satellites, and you can weed out the ones you, you know, that are too low for you to talk to, that kind of thing. So we're still listening for the beacon over here. And we're at 9 degrees. I imagine I'll start seeing it when we get to about 15 or so. Uh, on the 9700, of course, you can see the spectral uh, display there. I've got some birdies and some spurs in the passband of the uh, downlink of the satellite, just local, local junk over here. You know, hopefully it won't get in the way of me talking to folks. And we're just now hitting um, 15 degrees, so it's technically feasible. I'm going to go over to the, the transponder. Technically feasible that we would hear the, uh, you know, you know, start hearing our own signal. Now, on all of these satellites, there is an offset. That means that the exact input and output frequencies are going to be a little bit, a little bit offset from just the, what's published. So we're going to use the RIT on the um, 9700 in this case to offset my input from output signal. So the first thing you're going to do is start to transmit once you think you can visually see the satellite, you know, electrically see, see the satellite. And you can do a string of dits or you could do a uh, whatever you want to try to look for yourself. Now on Radio Sport 44 over here, um, people to use CW and they make contacts in CW. I'm going to put an offset of negative 0.4 kilohertz, one, two, three, four, and I'm going to start looking for myself on the screen here. Alpha Bravo 5, Nancy, AB5, November, Echo Mike 3, 4, Echo Mike 3, 4, Hot Springs, QRZ. So now it looks like I need a RIT of negative 2.82 kilohertz to spot myself on at this early part of the um, pass over the house, and this is going to be a nice pass. This is Alpha Bravo 5, Nancy, AB5, November, Echo Mike 3, 4, Hot Springs, QRZ. So now I'll start to do my QRZs. Oh. And it's possible that when you're weak into the satellite, you will be, you know, getting to other people. So it's good to start pretty early. And while we, your, your offset's going to change, so you're going to sort of trim up that, that RIT a little bit through the pass. Alpha Bravo 5, November, AB5, Nancy, Echo Mike 34, Hot Springs, QRZ. And you want your power level to be such that you're no louder than the beacon, the CW beacon. Because you, all of the power of the satellite's transmitter is spread among all the signals coming through it, and you don't want to be a power hog. QRZ, QRZ, Alpha Bravo 5, Nancy, Echo Mike 3, 4, Hot Springs. So I will adjust my power as it comes over the pass. We see we're 1,400 miles out right now. That's a good way. So I'm using full power to get to it. As it comes closer, I'll reduce my transmit power so I'm not louder than anybody else. I also use the recording feature of the 9700 to just hit a button on the microphone and have it uh, do it automatically. There we go. Just did it from you know a recorded file on the 9700. I heard a signal under there, but it's really weak. Uh, QRZ, QRZ, Alpha Bravo 5, Nancy Echo Mike 3 4. Yeah, K7VNE, Alpha Bravo 5, Nancy. Greetings, greetings, and good morning. Sounding good to hear in Hot Springs this morning, Roger. All right, have fun. So he was a little bit off frequency for me there. I'm going I'm to go sort of down the band a little bit with my VFO, find a clearer frequency, Alpha Bravo. 
let's pick a, this 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 here Alpha Bravo five Nancy AB five Nancy Echo Mike three four. So we're down to 0 0.27 kilohertz offset right now, which is interesting. Now you see other uh, signals on the pass band. Let's just tune to them. Now, a phenomenon that sometimes happens is as it gets high in the arc right over you, your antenna position is going to sort of have to flip around because you know, you're beaming out towards the horizon or up a little bit, and sometimes your antennas will flip over. You can also control whether the antennas are able to just flip backwards over into a reverse position to be able to get you to spot the satellite um, and move the antennas into position quicker. That's if your antennas are symmetrical, you know, vertically or horizontally. This is normally not a problem. All right, uh, AG2J, copy Alpha Bravo 5 Nancy, Echo Mike 3 4. Uh, Roger, America, Baker 5 Nancy, you're about a 5 7, you're New Jersey, Fox Mary 2 9, over. Roger, you're Fox Mary 2 9, Alpha Bravo 5 Nancy, Echo Mike 3 4, Echo Mike 3 4, Hot Springs, Roger. Uh, Roger, Echo Mike 3 4, thanks a lot, have a great day. Alpha Golf 2, Juliet, clear. All right, give me your uh, locator again. All right, very good. Thank you. 7-3. So we just sort of knock out some contacts. Uh, the pass on this is really, really nice today. So it's so you'll see that there's just a whole bunch of signals across the pass band, and we can tune across them. So they're giving their designator immediately, and if you know if the conditions were good and you didn't have anything else to do, in other words, you'd worked everybody in the passband, you could have a QSO for five, ten minutes, and you get to know almost everybody out there uh, to a point where you're just not uh, meeting anybody new for a while, until maybe you get on a different sat or you're there and it has a different password, it's covering a different area for you, and of course the clearer shot your antennas have at the uh, horizon, the better things will be for you as far as getting to stations which are on the edge of the passband or the, or the footprint of the uh, satellite itself. And as the satellite now, we'll look back over here and we'll see that it's getting down off its, its uh, top arc and coming back down towards uh, your loss of signal. The uh, coverage of the satellite becomes different. We're covering more of, of uh, Alaska now and northern Canada. We're starting to cut off South America. But you will get to a point where, you know, you just can't hit it. Now, on uh, Radio Sport 44 or high-pass satellites that are very high in the air, um, you not only have a longer time that you're going to be able to see them, but you're also going to be able to hit them for uh, uh, at further distances out, I've noticed. So the truth is I, I can't hit a Chinese satellite, the XW series, until they're under 1,100 miles away. I can hit the Radio Sport 44 at 16, 1,700 miles away, no problem, and barely get in at about 2,000 miles. And when it's overhead, I'll have my, reduced, uh, my power reduced to almost 5 watts uh, when it's, say, 400 miles from me because I don't want to hog the power of the passband. So there we go. My antenna is still tracking the uh, satellite as it comes down towards its loss of signal point. When I am done talking to these guys, and I've just jotted down their stuff on paper, I'll go down and I will uh, scroll to the bottom and open my QSO log. And I'll put in their call sign, like I put in uh, AB5N, if, if that was their call sign. And I'll do a lookup, and it will immediately populate with the information. You can put in their grid square over here, and then add the entry to your log. The log, as it's set up right now in the early phases, can hold 100 um, logs in here, 100 contacts, and then you can export it as a file and clear it out and start another 100. So I've already, uh, my, what is this, third week here? I'm at 144 contacts. On the bottom here, as I showed you on the uh, descriptive video about the SAT, it has a lot of the other settings and things like this. So, uh, And as well, uh, your firmware update is, is available down here. So you can do firmware updates as uh, 
Keith and Mike and the guys get the uh, firmware tuned up even more. So there you go, basic operation of the SAT as a satellite comes overhead. And it is, uh, wow, I haven't turned the HF radio on for three weeks. <laughs> so if you get one of these, enjoy. If you're uh, new to satellites, it'll just give you some sort of basic overview of what uh, linear satellite uh, operation is like there.